All right, 18. It's a challenging case. So we'll, we've got stuff down here, but we'll look at the top first and see what's going on. Where do you think we are in the body? Maybe like Sometimes a feel-good spot. without being told. Feel-good spot, right. The, the, this could be the genitals or it could be the nipple because we've got uh, bundles of smooth muscle. In the nipple, I feel like the bundles of smooth muscle are really big and large. And in the, the labia or the scrotum, the genital skin, they're usually multiple, many of them, and very, very small um, bundles. So there's numerous, way too many smooth muscle bundles for normal dermis, plus apocrine glands. So yeah, this is genital skin, although you can see apocrine glands around the nipple too. So nipple would be fair, fair thought. But I'll tell you, this is genital skin. And we can tell it probably is because of the diagnosis here. So what would you call if you just like had condyloma. this? Yeah, it's a polypoid growth with instead of the, the pointed finger-like projections of a regular verruca or wart, genital warts, condylomas have this rounded knuckles, right? Like if you ball up your fist and make knuckles, and, uh, and that's a pretty helpful clue. And then I want to go and find coilocytes. And here I think we've got nice coilocytes. Not just are they vacuolated, but they have large nuclei. So as you get towards the granular layer, normally the nuclei get smaller, but here they get paradoxically larger and then get this paler, clear cytoplasm around them. So to me, that's viral cytopathic effect from HPV. And we've got this uh, lobulated proliferation that's kind of knuckled condyloma. But then underneath here, well, I don't know, but that's not condyloma here. What is going on? We've got this cystic, invaginated growth pushing way, way down deep into the tissue with kind of cystic change in the middle. Up close, it's bland and glassy pretty much. So this is, a, this is an area of debate and very frustrating nomenclature issues throughout the history of pathology. In the past, people have called things like this Verrucous carcinoma, which has sometimes also been uh, equated with the giant condyloma of Lowenstein and Bushke, right? I think is the old school eponym name for it, okay? In more recent times, based on my understanding, and there's a really good paper about anogenital squamous proliferations by Mei Chan in Archives of Pathology, July or August 2019, we, uh, my colleagues and I, uh, Jennifer Cayley and Sarah Shalin and I put together, we were editors on a special issue of, of dermatopathology for general pathologists. And so that's all in, in two issues of archives in the summer of 2019. I'll put links in, uh, below if you're watching this online. Um, and uh, May Chan wrote a, just a beautiful paper uh, explaining and simplifying these very complicated lesions with complicated naming. So my current understanding is that Verrucous carcinoma is now considered to be a tumor that is bland, glassy, warty looking on top and pushes down into the dermis like this one's doing, but it is not HPV driven. So it does not have coilocytes. So to me, this is not a true verrucous carcinoma here. This is probably either, either you could think it's a giant condyloma, like a true HPV driven condyloma, but I don't think so because look at how deep that pushes in. I think it has to be malignant. So I think this is a squamous cell carcinoma, kind of the warty HPV driven type that's very like well differentiated pushing down and invading. So I would not call this verrucous carcinoma. Personally, I would call this an invasive squamous cell carcinoma. And there are some different subtypes that the gynecologic pathologists give to these, you know, whether it's keratinizing or basaloid or vorty. But in any case, a true verrucous carcinoma, sometimes is seen in the genitals, sometimes in the oral cavity. The place I most often see it is actually on the sole of the foot. But those are very warty-like, but they don't have HPV is the current thinking. Again, there's a lot of controversy and a lot of confusion in the literature about this entity over time. So to me, I would say this is an HPV-driven squamous cell carcinoma arising from condyloma. So with giant condyloma, they can push down, is what you're saying, as a verrucous carcinoma? So the problem is, is that because giant condylomas get so big, they, it can become very hard to tell what areas are kind of invagination within the condyloma versus like pushing invasion. On this case here, I think this is true pushing invasion. I mean, look at, this doesn't look like we're in the middle of a big polyp. There's a little polyp here, but this is huge crater going way down. So to me, I would certainly, if I had this case in real life, I would show my gynecologic colleagues, my, my gynepath colleagues that I think is so helpful when you deal with vulvar um, or anogenital skin lesions, especially is squamous atypia and HPV things. I feel like a GYM pathologists are very familiar with the complexities in this area and the terminology, because a lot of times these are gonna get treated 
uh, not by derm, but by gynecologic oncologists. And so it's really important to use the proper terminology that's going to be understood by the treating physician. I mean, that goes for anything in dermopath. Anytime I'm near an orifice, right, anogenital, near the oral cavity or in the mouth, I want to, or near the eyes, I want to make sure I'm using terms that are going to be understood by ENT, ophthalmology, you know, GI surgery, um, uh, gynecologic surgery, urology. So I think that's a general rule. But no, I, to me, I think this is way too much for just a condyloma, even a giant condyloma. To me, this is pushing invasion of the dermis. This is cancer. Um, so that's my thought. But it can be really hard to tell when they're polypoid and complex, like what's pushing invasion versus what's just the middle of the polypoid, you know, fungating looking condyloma. And those can be really challenging cases.